Welcome back to the ranch. Uh, it's uh, going to be a hot one today, 33 degrees. So I started early this morning before I started filming and just uh, did a heap of tacking, um, put some uh, all the suspension gear on in the right spot, hopefully, and uh, got the information back from Tough Ride on that. So put all those in the right spot, ready for the structural welds. Uh, put a couple of gussets in, but I'm actually going to reposition those after I've tacked them in. I realised that I can probably put them on the other side of that chassis member and uh, it'll afford a bit more strength, but also get me out of the way of a tank that's gonna go in there. So uh, I'll have to knock those off, but it's only a couple of welds, so that should be pretty easy, knowing my welding skills. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got to put in a cross member at the front um, near the uh, A-frame join. I was gonna move that further forward, but uh, I don't think from a structural strength integrity perspective it's a good idea that was to accommodate the tank moving these gussets um, achieves the same outcome for me i've got 610 mil for a 600 mil wide tank to slot in nicely there so not much room for error but should be right um, yeah and then i've just got a few other bits and pieces i've got to put the uh, wind down steadies on the brackets for those and weld those off ready and uh, there's a there's a piece of steel on the front of the a-frame that's got to go in and I want to fix the bit where I've made the frame a little bit too wide. It's a couple mil too wide in one spot. I mentioned that in a previous uh, video. I'm going to try and cut that out, knock a couple mil off it and put it back in. Hopefully get that absolutely flush with the outside all the way around then. This is going to be a pretty tricky cut because it's got to check out over this. But I want it to kick back in at that point there obviously and it's also going to straddle this join so it's going to sit the 50 mil is going to sit like that and then up to the top um, the other complication is that i've got to get the structural welds done on this behind here take the fish plate off do that weld put the fish plate on weld it with welding all these spots and all the holes down the edge and everything and then <clears throat> Once all that's done, the thing's probably moved out or around a bit, which makes this cut needing to be trimmed. But I need to do it ahead of the guy coming because it's going to be too much to try and get it done whilst he's here. So I need to get it as close as possible. If I have to knock an edge off or whatever and make it a little bit smaller when he's here, so be it. But I might even make it a little bit short, like a middle too short, just so it's uh, easy to put in. But yeah, we'll get into that and see how we go. That's it pretty much where I wanted it. Uh, we'll see how it goes when the, when everything else gets welded off and I've got to try and fit this in around welds and other stuff. But Yeah, so that's the piece I just cut out around the fish plate, looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to try something, I'm not sure if it's too foolhardy, but uh, we'll see how we go. I'm going to cut these 50 mil pieces out of this chassis member and then weld in this um, through to the other side um, and that's going to be for grey water waste to come through. I I could run the pipes underneath these chassis members but they're going to be exposed to a fair bit of damage and I'm trying to keep that undercarriage as clear as possible. In fact the only spot that I'm going to have undercarriage protrusion is where the grey water discharge comes out of the tank and across to the side so you can hook a hose onto it or drop it on the ground there. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. It's going to be pretty difficult. I'm going to try and drill these corners out and then cut between all the way through, obviously, and then put this section in, weld it all the way around to give it back its strength. Both ends, because there's two entry points to the grey water waste, one from the ensuite, one from the kitchen. Yeah, I'll see how we go. This could be pretty uh, frustrating, but we'll get into it. That's the holes drilled. I um, decided to rotate it 
So it's going to sit that way instead of that way, so the less impact along the top line there. Um, I drilled those holes all the way through from top to bottom, so I know that I've got absolute alignment on either side then. And uh, now I've just got to cut those out <clears throat> with the cutting disc grinder and hopefully slot it through and then tack weld it off. Then I've got to do the same at the other end. Get into it. That turned out all right. So it's got to weld that off. Really rock and roll. Tidy it up a bit. Looks good. That's them in place. I'm definitely not the world's best welder, and I'm glad the guy's coming tomorrow to finish the rest of it. But they turned out all right. Pretty happy with that. A bit of progress. Uh, it's about midway through the day, so still got to get cracking and finish everything off. Put that section in, tacked it off, ready to weld. Knock that out, cut it back a couple of mil, put it back in. She's right on now, spot on all the way around, exactly the width I need. Um, just about to tack these in place there, the corner steady brackets that will go in there also offer a bit of strength here at the back where, the, where there's going to be a um, bumper bar hanging off with the wheels on it, so that'll strengthen up that joint a bit. I'm also going to have a, in the future a, a uh, recovery points on those bits there. So again, more strength for that. There's a corner steady sitting in place, ready to go. Um, I've got it all set up so I can make sure that I can spin that without hitting anything. Even when the walls are sitting out here, um, there'll be enough room to get that in and spin it around. And there's the bracket sitting in there. I've left a gap here for that weld to go down behind it uh, to join this bit to join that bit to that bit. But I think that's it all in place. It's pretty neat completely out of the way, won't get caught on anything, that's for sure. Um, I can actually take these feet off, rotate them around so they sit like that as well, but we'll just see how that looks, I'm pretty happy with that as it is. So good to go, so I've just got to tack these off and then we're away. A bad day got a fair bit done uh, just got that chassis member in and the gussets cut in front of it uh, it all looks pretty good there's one little gap I'll have to try and tweak while we're welding it to, to fill that uh, but I think it's good enough um, I think I showed you already I've got the rear corner steadies in they're looking okay they need to be welded off and then fitted off later on uh, yeah so I'll make turn up in the morning uh, hopefully it's what he promised to do anyway so we ready to do all the structural welds then. I think I'll spend the rest of the afternoon tidying the floor and getting me out of the way. So we've got unencumbered access to get it all done. Pretty exciting. Uh, anyway, I'll catch us all later on. It's welding day. Just getting a, everything set up. It's all cleaned up, ready to roll. So right now the chassis is flat, square and true, but we all know how things go when uh, 
you apply about a thousand degrees Celsius to them. So we'll see what happens by the end of the day and whether or not we've still got a square, flat and true chassis. And uh, here's hoping we might be hitting it with an oxy later on to get it back to straight again. Anyway, I'm just gonna time lapse and do odd random shots today and chuck a bit of music over the top of this. So sit back and relax and watch some uh, legend of a welder smash it together for me. Cheers. Okay, you can see it there in the background, which is all done. Uh, was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down moment? I don't know, the world's just beautiful. But uh, yeah, heat does funny things. My dead straight true chassis is no longer. There's a bit of a dip uh, in the middle. I'll just turn you around. So yeah, I've got the straight edge sitting on that bad boy now. There is a small dip there, so the bit holding the the bit holding the suspension, the swing hangers, um, is a bit low, lower than it was before. That was all dead level, but not anymore. That's good. That's all good through to there. So I've got about a, I don't know, it's probably two or three mil in the guts there, which is gonna be high, because this is upside down. So it's a bit of a height issue in the middle of the van. Uh, but apart from that, not too bad. This turned into quite an ordeal. I tells you, uh, put that fish plate on and welded it off and it just stretched the whole thing significantly. So that, that distance from there to there <coughs> was, uh, it did grow quite a bit and we had to get some serious chains and block and tackles and, and uh, clamps onto it to try and pull it back in which we did successfully uh, but overall 
not too bad an outcome, but I reckon I'm going to be playing with uh, the outside panels a little bit to um, make finesse them to get them on and in the right spots. Uh, that's the wall panels later on. And uh, the floor, we'll just have to see how that goes. There might have to be more glue in some spots than others, I think, just to, to make it all work. Alternatively, I could hit it, hit it with an oxy along the underside of this bit here. That should um, make that shrink, which means it'll bow back up again and it'll, it'll make back that few mil in the middle there. But I don't know about that because it will damage the, um, the galvanising as well, which we've got to consider, consider as part of that equation. Plus I don't have an oxy, it's at my old man's joint, which is complicated. Anyway, fairly happy, end of another day, one step closer. Okay, it's the next day now. Just realized I didn't get the chain mounts um, welded off on the side of the chassis yesterday because I'm an idiot. So I've called old mate and he looks like he might be able to pop in this afternoon and knock them on for me, which is great. Uh, what am I gonna do today? Gonna finish the tank uh, mounts, get those on, maybe get them on. Uh, hopefully the shrouds will be ready today or tomorrow. Uh, I've already been to Bunnings and bought about 20 things I don't need and a vice, which will help me uh, with a few jobs. One that's important right now is to get the strap um, that's gonna hold the tanks up folded to the same profile as the uh, shrouds. So that'll be the jobs for today. I'm gonna take it a bit easy today. Uh, do I'll probably do a half day and see, see what happens. Fitted so I can get uh, into bending some stuff. It's got some uh, good adjustment and it can rotate. It's the Irwin brand. It also rotates that way as well, so I can shift it around to this side of the bench, undo these, and it rotates that way. And it's also got a round holder, a pipe holder. So, yeah, not a bad bit of kit, I hope. Um, be able to get into it with that. All right, good news, the tank shroud's turned up uh, sooner than expected, so I can get all that fitted up today. Bad news, I completely cocked up one of the uh, designs, the old 400 by 600 versus 600 by 400 rule. Don't know why I had that in my brain. I was having trouble drawing that, and I think it was just too late at night when I was sketching it up, so I had to bring him back and get that one redone. Disappointing, he didn't call me when the numbers didn't add up on the dimensions on the thing, just went and built it wrong anyway. Um, live and learn. Anyway, that's a $100 mistake. Uh, we'll have to pick that one up in the morning, but the rest look schmick. So we'll get those going and uh, hopefully get it knocked over today. So I just made 16 of these babies up and they're still hot. Ouch. Just cut the inside profile out there on that corner so that it fits profile of the angle. So it's gonna weld in two of those on each one for a bit of extra strength. Get to use the new vice already, which is amazing. Um, yeah, and that'll hopefully provide enough strength to carry those tanks. The bolts will come up through there, obviously. So should be all out of the way, it should be all good. Yeah, nah, certainly not a welder, but should be right.
one strap done. Got to drill a hole in it. <clears throat> I'll probably attach it to this. There's some sicker flex or something and a couple of pop rivets maybe on the ends where they're not going to uh, touch the tank. Just to hold it in place when I'm putting the shroud on from underneath and so on. Also to give it a bit more strength. But I just bent that in the vise. Worked out pretty well. Just got um, seven more to do. Get on with it. That's the tank shrouds on, all complete. So I got 40 mil, three mil thick gal straps down to the brackets I put in that I showed you in a previous video underneath here, they're bolted down. There'll be, there'll be split washers here, to stop those rattling loose. And um, I'll be able to also add washers underneath the shroud to get a bit of height up and down or maybe a bit of nylon or something in there, I'm not sure yet, just to, depends on when the tanks drop in, how close they are to the floor and if I want to put any space there. But yeah, they come up a treat. I've um, Sikaflexed these on with a metal adhesive to the shroud so that when I undo them and take them off, they all stay in one piece and I can just pop them back on a lot simpler. I have got, I have got um, some fasteners to put through here but uh, pop rivets, but I don't think I'll do that. I'll just see how they turn out in the morning when it's dry and whether they hold sufficiently as they are. Yeah, but that's all four done. On to the next adventure. Ticking off all the jobs from the list. Just got this bracket in here. It's a bit of five mil strap, it's pretty heavy just to give this corner a bit of strength. Obviously the wall sits on here, so it's a long way from the chassis. Thought it needed a bit of support, a bit of help. Uh, I've also put the corner steadies in, so I've done this on both sides. They, came, they went in really neatly up against the chassis. Uh, I turned the foot around on it, so rather than it sitting horizontal when it's folded, it's, it's flat against the chassis like that, just to keep it out of the way a bit more. I've also got clear access through here for a winder. Uh, I've, bought a, I've bought one that fits in the drill. It's 590 long, so it comes out to about here, which is good. Uh, next job, I've got to put this light strap, 3 mil gal strap, all around the perimeter, like that. Um, and then the XPS core fiberglass composite sits against it like that. That's got to be welded along here. When I flip it over, I'll do some stitch welds on the other side as well, in the, in the radius there. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the job, do the whole lot all the way around. And then uh, flip it over. That'll be an exciting task with all the extra weight on it. I'll pull all the tank shrouds off so I don't bend them in the process. I'll take all the steadies off so they're not adding any extra weight. That's the strap on all the way around now. So it's all done. Whole perimeter. All the way around there. Except for the rear section. I think it's going to be an angled piece here for the for the rear cutaway wall to drop into, but I'll do that when it's the right way up because it's too complicated upside down and it can be easily weld the other way up. Uh, during that process, I realized that I'd made this tank shroud too far forward. It was, it was still gonna clear this gusset when the tank sits in here, but only just. So I moved it 15 mil that way. Means I ended up with an extra set of holes, had to rip off all the silicon and uh, re-silicon it. I'll wait for that to dry a bit more and then I'll clean it up even better. All the stones will probably get that at some point in the future. Uh, not bad going, given I mean, it's the only screw up I've had to date, but it's a screw up nonetheless. Rectified pretty quickly though. Uh, next job is to cut these. Uh, they turned up in the mail yesterday, so I'll cut those through there. This bit was um, to make them an extension on your on your on your uh, vehicle uh, hitch point, but. It was cheaper to buy the whole assembly, so I'm just going to cut it through there. I don't need the whole thing, and then I'm going to weld these on, one either side. These will be hitch receivers for our recovery point that I'll go on the back there, so that'll line up with the 
chassis rails to give it all the strength it needs. If I ever have to get pulled out backwards, that'll be the place to do it. All right, nothing left to do except flip it over and, uh, well, I've got to take this tank shroud off, but I'm waiting for that silicon to dry. So tomorrow's going to be flip over day. But uh, that's the end of the episode and uh, you'll have to wait for the next one to see whether or not it falls on my head and kills me. Cheerio.